Mr. Speaker, we are approaching the deadline for the Super Committee to propose a debt reduction plan. Most economists are in agreement on what we need to do. In the long term, reduce debt by at least $4 trillion over 10 years through a mix of added revenues and reduced spending. In the short term, make immediate investments to create jobs and to reduce unemployment. I encourage the Super Committee not to ignore the second of those priorities because now is the perfect time to create jobs by making large-scale investments in American infrastructure. Since World War II, every economic contraction was followed by a period of economic expansion. But although economists tell us the recession has ended, we have had no economic expansion. Unemployment remains at 9 percent. Economic growth is projected to be moderate at best. The reason our economy is taking so long to recover is because this recession was more severe than any since the Great Depression, something that seemingly few in government, finance, or academia realized at the time. Because of the historic severity of this recession, American households, local and state governments, and European governments find themselves in debt like never before. Consequently, consumer demand is and will be depressed while households and governments reduce spending. And when demand falls, businesses don't hire. It is that simple. Some believe this period of decreased demand will last five to seven years. A policy of fiscal austerity will make matters only worse. We only have to look back at the United States in 1937, Japan in the 90s, and Europe last year and this year to understand that when consumers are not spending, the worst thing a government can do is stop spending itself. The new American Foundation report makes the case that investing $1.2 trillion over the next five years in rebuilding our infrastructure will create 22 million jobs. 22 million jobs over a five-year period. That is more than the 22 million jobs that were created under President Clinton. And the job creation of the 1990s raised so much revenue that our federal budget reached record surplus. Times were so good that we were debating at that time the implications of repaying the entirety of the nation's debt. The lesson that that greatest debt and deficit reduction tool is job creation. That is why the Super Committee must include significant job creation components in its recommendations. Let me add, Mr. Speaker, that our infrastructure is sorely in need of massive investment. Our roads, bridges, airports, energy grid, water infrastructure are all in horrible condition. The World Economic Forum ranks America 23rd in infrastructure quality. The American Society of Civil Engineers gives our infrastructure a D grade. Transportation for America reports that there are 63,000 structurally deficient bridges in our country, including 99 in my community of Western New York. The Chamber of Commerce has said that unless we repair our infrastructure, we will suffer $336 billion in lost growth over the next five years. To my colleagues who believe that we can't afford to make investment at this time, I say we can't afford not to. Delaying the repair or replacement of infrastructure by just two years can increase the cost of doing those repairs by a factor of five. I also that we just spent $62 billion nation building in Iraq and $73 billion nation building in Afghanistan. There was no objection when the borrowing to finance that nation building nor should there be objection now when we're proposing to do nation building right here at home. And given the current conditions, economic conditions, financing American infrastructure projects will never be cheaper. Interest rates are extremely low. The cost of labor and materials are low due to lack of demand. And the equipment is cheap because it is idle. Repairing and expanding our infrastructure work is that we need to do to stay globally competitive, and we will never be cheaper to do it than it is to do today. Quite simply, there is much work to be done, and a lot of Americans need to do work. Now is the best time to do that. Mr. Speaker, a large-scale $1.2 trillion five-year investment in infrastructure would create 27 million jobs that cannot be shipped overseas. It will reduce unemployment. It will reduce the deficit. And in the end, we will have an infrastructure our economy needs and our country 
deserves. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from New York yields back.